Hey YouTube, Sandy Frank here. Today I'm going to be doing an episode of, of Hobby Talk where we're going to be talking about talking about and taking a look back at Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Now this movie came out in 2002 um, as a follow-up to The Phantom Menace. You know, it's Episode 2. And um, back then when this movie came out, I really enjoyed it. Um, I liked it more than than the Phantom Menace at the time but I think over years as years have gone by I think I like it it seemed like maybe it aged not as well as some of the other Star Wars movies but um this is going to be kind of like a, a spoiler review so and and also a look back so um, if you haven't watched it and you don't want to be spoiled then um you know maybe um come back after you've watched the movie so these are some of the figures. These action figures came out when the movie came out. Um, they're like really big packages for the figures. Which, and they take up some space. But these are still the original ones. This is the first wave that came out. They had these little backgrounds. Little paper backgrounds in the back of the figures. And that's how you know they're some of the first releases. So here's the Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, what's really cool about a lot of these figures. As you can see that lightsaber. It's... It's metal and the figures have actually uh, magnets in the hands where it's like they have this called force action where they grab the lightsaber pretty cool um, and I really like that the lightsabers are metal so this is the Obi-Wan Kenobi figure and by the way I think um, the two highlights of this movie are um, Ewan McGregor's portrayal of Obi-Wan is so good he's so good as Obi-Wan and it makes me really look forward to seeing the Obi-Wan series that's coming up in, here in the next couple years on Disney+. Plus. And also, Ian McDermott was fantastic as as, uh, as Palpatine. And um, those, those two definitely make the movie work. <clears throat> so the movie starts off with... Um, um, Senator Amidala, she's not the queen, now she's been asked to be Senator. She's coming back for a vote at the Senate, and an assassination attempt is made on her life. And, um, it was, a there was a bomb that went off, and she was still using the decoy method to escape, um, getting attacked. Let's see. Let's see if I can find a... And she was attacked by Zam Wessel. And this bounty hunter, she also did a second attempt where um, she used these little poisonous worm things. But thankfully, um, Anakin and Obi-Wan were assigned to be her security. And they, they used the force and sensed the danger and saved her from that. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh. Here's the here's an Anakin Skywalker figure. Um, this also one one with the background in it, and he has force action. Except doesn't. Oh yeah, there's a lightsaber back in there. I can't see it very well. There you can kind of see it in a little glance of it back there. So it's got magnets in his hands. So <clears throat> um, Obi Wan then um, is able to. Uh, using a little dart that they found um, Zam gets killed right before she tells uh, who hired her to do the assassination and um, a little poisonous dart um, Obi-Wan's able to take to this diner which we do have this figure over here and we meet this guy um, Dexter Jetster um, <laughs> like a chef of this uh, diner and um, there's the dart right there, the little dart. And he's able to identify that dart as a Camino um, saber dart. And so Obi-Wan is able to trace that back to this planet called Camino. So he, he goes back there to investigate this attack. And meanwhile, um, Anakin, who's now, you know, a young man, as you see in this figure, Anakin is assigned to to guard the queen, or guard Senator Amidala. So they go off to, to Naboo, fall in love, um, 
which Anakin, that's forbidden for Anakin to fall in love with, with someone. So, um, they're kind of like, uh, make a decision to, to not, um, be in secret. But eventually Obi-Wan, he runs into, when he's at Kamino, he finds out that, that the Kamino people are, um, they're master cloners and they're breeding this clone army and the, the source of the clones, the original DNA, is this guy, Jango Fett. Really cool figure here. Um, um, he's basically the, the original um, genetic material for all the clones. And we find out he wanted an unaltered clone for himself, which is Boba Fett. So Boba Fett's just a kid in this, in this uh, show. And, um, anyway, Obi-Wan strongly, uh, suspects Jango Fett as the, the person who's behind the assassination attempts, and they get into a confrontation at Kamino, and Jango Fett and Boba Fett escape, but Obi-Wan's able to track their ship, so he follows them to this new planet called Geonosis. And let me go back to Camino. Camino is like a water planet. I really, it's a pretty cool planet. And I like the idea of the clones and all that. Here, here's one of the clones right here. Which, obviously, they're all Jango Fett's. But they've been, they've been uh, bred to um, age twice as fast as a regular human so that they can get this army up and going. And they've been, uh, they're not quite as a, uh, as a, uh, um, independent as their original host, which is Jango Fett. So these clones, I get, um, they're almost ready to be deployed, basically. They're almost fully grown. So, <clears throat> like I was saying, Obi-Wan follows Jango Fett to this new planet called Geonosis. And it's kind of, a, it's another really cool planet. It's like an insect hive planet where these, uh, I wish I had a figure of the Geonosin. They're like bug alien creatures that are intelligent. And they have a huge droid um, refinery there where they're they're building battle droids. You know, like the old battle droids from, from uh, episode one. Um, let's see what else do we got here that we can show. Oh, here's one right here. I didn't realize I had this. That is the Geonosin. Pretty cool design of an alien. Um, they have these uh, really cool weapons that shoot these uh, green laser blobs. They're pretty powerful. And um, they are very, uh, very stealth. Like, um, they're hard to see. They can camouflage themselves real easy in the background. But... That's a Geonosian warrior. Um, so, Obi-Wan actually, he follows Jango Fett to this planet. He discovers that this guy is behind the Separatist movement. It's actually, he knows him as um, Count Dooku. This figure, uh, that's his uh, Sith name, Darth Tyrannus. And, and Count Dooku tells it's surprising but he actually tells obi-wan when he's after obi-wan's been captured he tells him exactly what's going on that the senate is being controlled by a lord of the sith who we know as palpatine but the jedi they're completely oblivious to this because the dark side has clouded their judgment and um pretty interesting that in the last jedi um, Luke Skywalker talks about how the Jedi failed because they Palpatine was just manipulating everything. It's, it's really cool to see how he was doing that in this film. Um, he was just arranging everything, creating the entire um, conflict. He's behind all of it. He's behind um, all the. Uh, he's behind uh, Dooku's working for him. And leading the Separatists, who we get to see the leaders of the Separatists there in Genesis. And Separatists are actually, they're designing the Death Star. So, um, 
Palpatine's manipulating that to get all this technology to build a Death Star. Which, I mean, it's right now at this point, it's just plans to build it. And um, so Dooku is the, or Darth Tyrannus, he is the, uh, he's who replaced Darth Maul as the Sith Lord um, to assist um, Palpatine. Darth Ty or Darth Sidious. <clears throat> And um, Christopher Lee he plays a very similar role to uh, his uh, Sauron um, in um, Lord of the Rings, Solomon, not Sauron, and um, uses almost the exact same lines, which always cracked me up. So Christopher Lee plays uh, Count Dooku, which is a ridiculous name for a Sith Lord. Um, here's a really cool character that you see in the movie. It doesn't do much, but Plo Koon. Um, that's one of my favorite Jedis. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a metal lightsaber, so he just has a plastic one. But that's a really cool figure. Um, Jedi Master. So, anyway, Obi-Wan gets... Gets... Um, um, gets captured on Geonosis, snooping around there. Finds out that this plan is going on. He doesn't believe Dooku, uh, telling him about how Darth Sidious is, is controlling the entire uh, Senate and manipulating everything. Um, and anyway, um, Obi Wan was able to uh, to transmit a uh, before he got captured. He was able to transmit a message to Anakin, who he thought was in on Naboo, but Anakin, there's another key thing I forgot here. When, when Anakin is with Naboo falling in love with Padme, um, he has a nightmare in which he he sees his mom um, in danger. So he he tells Padme, I have to, we have to go, or he tells her that he has to leave and go help his mom and she goes with him. And this is on Tatooine. So while they're on Tatooine, that's when they get the message um, that Obi-Wan's in trouble. So they go decide to go help um, Obi-Wan. But in the meantime, this is a very key development part of Anakin, is the Sand People. He finds out that that um, his mother has been freed and married um, 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 Lars, Kleeg Lars, who is the father of Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, or father of Uncle Owen, and um, he gets to meet that, that family, and he finds out that his mom, Shmi, has been captured by sand people, and they went out trying to rescue her, and a bunch of them died, and so Anakin tells him, hey, I'm going to go find my mother, so he goes and finds her right before um, she dies, she was like holding on just for that last um Re, uh, reunion with her son. It was, that was a kind of a nice scene. Um, that was one of the better acted scenes by Hayden Christensen in this movie. Um, but she dies in his arms. He gives in to, to hate and rage and kills all the sand people and all the women and children of sand people um, and realizes that something's not right with him as a Jedi because a Jedi wouldn't do that. So, among men, the, this is one of the things I don't like about this movie is they portray Anakin as whiny and a fit thrower, and it's really annoying. And it, it's so much so that um, it makes the relationship of him and Padme not seem realistic, and thus it seems like they have bad chemistry the whole show. And I've never liked how they portrayed Anakin in this movie I much more prefer how they portray him in the Clone Wars animated show that seems more like Anakin um, it's not Hayden Christians Christians fault it is I blame George Lucas that's the way he wrote the lines and obviously they directed him to act this way so I blame George Lucas not Hayden Christensen but anyway they go to Geonosis to go rescue Obi-Wan um, and when they get there, um, this is, 
there's some boring parts where they're going through this uh, droid factory and the action sequences or whatever to do that. But eventually they get caught and um, are put in this. This is now you're getting to the good parts of the movie. They're put into this huge arena um, to be executed. And there's these really cool creatures. Each Obi Wan is there. Um, you have Anakin and Padme there. And um, right before they go into the arena, Padme discloses that she is 100% in love with Anakin. And they obviously, they think they're going to die, and they profess love for each other, and they, um, that kind of sets that into motion. Uh, here's uh, Padme um, from the, uh, the arena where she's going to be put to death. Um, so these huge creatures come out to, to, uh, to, you know, destroy, um, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme, but they're able to get out of it. It's a really cool way they do it. Um, Anakin actually is able to use the force to, to, like, tame the beast that's, that's, uh, going to be killing him, and Obi-Wan's able to fight off this praying mantis-like creature long enough to get his lightsaber, and once he has his lightsaber, he's, he's able to finish it pretty quick, and Padme is able to use ingenuity to make her escape as well. So they escape, um, but all the battle droids, they're leashed onto uh, the uh, um, the scene. And also um, the, the Jedi um, Council had gotten the message that Obi-Wan sent. And so they arrive on the scene as well and there's a, this huge battle of the battle droids and all the, all the Jedi. It's such a great scene, seeing all the Jedi Masters and all the Jedi. Pretty much, you, the main movie makes it seem like all the Jedi are right there. And they have this huge battle. Um, during the battle, a lot of Jedis get killed. Jango Fett gets killed right in front of Boba Fett. So you have Boba Fett seeing his dad get murdered by Jedi. Not murdered, but killed in battle. Um, and eventually, they get surrounded. They get overwhelmed by the battle droids. And at the very end, you have Yoda arriving on scene with the troopers. Because Yoda went to go investigate the clones for himself to Kamino. Gets the troopers there, and then there's this huge outbreak of the Clone Wars on Geonosis. You have the 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 clone troopers in action against the battle droids and the separatists and you see clearly this is where the the franchise is going is the clone wars and um as this is all breaking out um they spot dooku trying to escape so um you have um obi-wan and anakin they track down dooku to um to a ship and confront him in a this is another great few scenes here where Anakin battles with um, Count Dooku. He's quickly disposed of, gets his arm cut off. Um, Obi Wan um, is not able; he gets defeated as well. Well, Obi Wan um, goes in and um, tries to to help Anakin, but it's too late. Um, they both get defeated by Dooku, and right as Dooku is getting ready to end them both, Yoda shows up, and you have this great lightsaber battle between Yoda and Count Dooku, and it's pretty much a draw, I think. Dooku uses um, kind of a, uses dirty tricks where he he is about to crush An Anakin and Obi Wan, and Yoda has to. Go save them, and Dooku escapes. And at the end of the movie, you see Dooku meeting with, with, um, with Sidi Darth Sidious, and he's telling him, "Hey, our plans are working. Um, the Clone War has begun." So you got this really cool end to the movie where you're very excited to see Episode Three. So I'll go ahead and show 
Um, I'll show my sketch parts um, from this, this movie. Got this really cool Jenga Fett sketch card. That one is by Brad Hudson. He does nice sketch cards. Um, got this really cool Lama Sue. This is the one of the Camino cloner. That's actually a prime minister of uh, of Camino that's developing all these clones. Really cool sketch, man. Look, I love the the clone, the Camino one's eyes. Really neat. Jude Gallagher did that one. Um, here's a um, C3PO. C3PO has uh, has got coverings now, but they're like a gray colored covering. Um, he doesn't have his his uh, usual um, gold coverings. Here's a oh that one was by Nick Gribben. And uh, we have Clone Trooper here. This is uh, Jose Ruiz. Um, the Clone Trooper design is pretty cool. Um, here is uh, Masa Meda. He is like um, Palpatine, Chancellor Palpatine's like uh, right hand man up there to uh, kind of like tell the crowd, you know, to get into order, all that stuff. Floyd Man did that one. Um, uh, we have here tender moment of young Boba Fett after he sees Jenga Fett get killed. Looking at he picked up the helmet. That's a cool scene in the movie. That's by Carolyn Craggs. Um, there's a really nice Padme sketch. Um, Padme very sad as uh, they're getting ready to go into the um, the arena. She knows she's 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 pretty defeated at that moment. Because she thinks she's about to die and gives in to pro um, proclaiming her love for Anakin. Which Chris K did that. This sketch card. This always makes me laugh because this scene with this is on, on Naboo where they're falling in love. There's Anakin and Padme, and he's riding around this tick monster, wherever that thing is. Um, just a goofy looking scene where he's riding on the back of that thing. And this is really cool. Oh, that one is by Jay Manchand. This one is by Carlos Caballero. This is really cool. This is right as they're getting led out to the arena to be executed, where they think they're going to be executed, and having a, a, a love scene moment there. And another really great um, sketch card. Love this one. Um... Benedetti, I can't remember her first name, but um, Angelica Benedetti, I think she did that one. But one of my favorite sketches, great sketch card of of, uh, of Padme. Just look in her eye as she know she thinks she's about to be executed. And here's some autographs from the movie. Um, you have you get to see a lot of uh, Jedi Masters in this movie. You got, there's Eeth Koth, um, Hassani Shapi, you got Shakti, Orly Shosh Shoshan. This is uh, out of 50. Um, there's Zam Wessel, who is the uh, assassin who tries to uh, to kill um, Padme at the beginning of the movie. Leanna Walsman. This is a, a really cool uh, Jedi Master Kit Fisto, Zach Jensen. This is our 22 refractor from uh, the Star Wars Chrome. I think it's Jedi versus Sith or something like that. Love that card. Um, here we have um, Nalini Krishan as Barris Afi. Um, she's the Padawan of Luminari. Here's young Boba Fett. Dana Logan played Boba Fett in that movie. Um, here's a great um, New Zealand actress who played uh, um, Tom Wee, Renee Owen. That's gold out of 50. Her autograph. Um, that's high tech. Um, this is a cool scene. Um, Obi Wan um, talks to this guy in the. Uh, the club where they're trying to find Zam Wessel, and uh, 
Elon Sleazebagano, uh, Matt Dorian, uh, that's out of 99, he tells him, he, he tries to sell Obi-Wan death sticks. I'll just say that. Um, this guy, this guy's, this is a really cool auto, Nick Gillard. Um, he plays one of the Jedis in the, uh, the big Geonosis arena. And he is also the stunt coordinator for all the Jedi battles. Um, here's a uh, Ayla Sakura Jedi Master, Amy Allen. Um, here's that Masameda guy, Jerome Blake, yelling at the uh, Senate to have order. That's green out of 50. There's um, Jedi Master Ki Adi Mundi, Silas Carson. Um, here is a really cool uh, Django Fett autograph, Tamara Morrison, another great New Zealand actor. This one's out of 12, Refractor. Um, one of my favorite archives cards right there. And right there, that's that's a scene in the um, the arena right there. <clears throat> um, this one's cool. I mean, this is a um, Chancellor Palpatine. It's a one-of-one one Ian McDermott from Archives on card auto, gold ink. Um, went right when he's getting granted the... Uh, emergency powers and the first thing he does is create the clone army so he already knew about it this is just part of him um, just grasping power creating this mess to get power and nice uh, Hayden Christensen autograph and there's a scene from the arena um, with the, you can see some other Jedi's back there battling um, it's an on card auto and that one is out of two so those are cool overall um, I think it's I think it's a good movie I mean obviously I like it because it's Star Wars but I rank it as probably one of the lower of the, um, the Star Wars movies um, for me anyway I, I probably I give it two and a half stars out of five um i, th I think it i actually rank it below phantom menace now because the acting is really bad but it does have better action and some great scenes at the end of the movie but man some of the the uh screenwriting the uh dialogue is so bad especially the dialogue between anakin and and uh, padme it's really bad to watch um there's not much chemistry there because they make Anakin such a whiny um, character in the movie that it kind of, you you wonder why would Annabella have anything uh, romantically to do with Anakin because he's so whiny and throws fits. So, I give it two and a half stars out of five. Um, I definitely enjoyed watching it. I wasn't bored watching it as I reviewed it again the other day. Um, there's great parts in the movie that I definitely enjoy more than other parts. And it definitely builds the story. Makes you excited to see episode 3. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this review and a look back. Um, I didn't have any of the large um, autograph pictures from that movie. Um, I do have some from uh, from other movies. And um, you'll get to see those as, as I continue this series and review other Star Wars movies. Um, I always remember these, especially this sketch card. Um, that's why I love sketch cards. They bring you back to moments in the film. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more videos. Um, definitely more Star Wars movies reviews coming. It just, it takes a while to get everything ready to do the video. All right, stay tuned. Later.